Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for this video, we're going to be doing something that you guys requested that I am not looking forward to do. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be trying really strange and possibly gross 1950s foods that we really don't eat anymore. Now, of course, there's that 1% of the universe that does. I'm saying like we don't, we don't advertise it anymore. We don't often see it at parties anymore or anything like that. Um, and this is a video that you guys requested in my last video about five shocking 1950s meals that we don't eat anymore. And you guys are like, try it, try it. Oh, that's so gross, try it. Now the three things that I have on this list are stuff that you would find often at a party or a get together or um, a picnic. So I dress for the occasion. And the three meals on this list are jello tuna, bologna cake, and ambrosia salad. So. We're just gonna go ahead and give it all a try. So let's go ahead and get started. So first, I wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with thousands of classes available in design, fine art, culinary, business, and more. If you wanna learn something new or master your skills, premium memberships gives you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are right for you, and it is much more affordable than taking in-person classes. I have been following Brandon Waffle's Instagram-worthy photography course where he teaches how to shoot, edit, and share, and it has been improving the quality of my Instagram since. So join more than 7 million creators learning with Skillshare online. Skillshare is actually giving away two free months of premium membership to help you explore your creativity if you click the link in the description box and after that it's only $10 a month. Make 2020 your year where you can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity with Skillshare's online classes. Okay, so to make bologna cake, I'm starting off with taking bologna and stacking it up high using cream cheese as the glue for sticking them together. Now that it's high enough for me, I'm spreading the cream cheese all over it like it's a cake. Then I'm taking spray can cheese and adding little drops around the edges so it looks more like a cake. Then I'm adding a drop in the center to help stick the olives and red pepper for decoration. Lastly, I'm placing rich crackers like they would around the plate and it's ready to eat. So the first thing we're gonna try is the bologna cake, which turned out really nice. Turned out like the way I see it in the little vintage cookbook, so I'm pretty proud of it. So I brought a knife with me, I'm just gonna Ooh, that cut's weird. Okay. Let's just cut a little piece. Okay. All right, so that is the inside of it. Looks really nice. And you're supposed to take a Ritz cracker and just kind of take a little, little piece. Let me just grab this one here. Oh, just like that. Wait. I am surprised at how good that was. Now, I mean, I wasn't. I did call it in the last video that it would. It does sound good. 
I would imagine it being good, but I've heard from people saying, oh, it's too salty, it's too watery, it's, you know, the, the amount of bologna is too much. And I was really scared and I got scared from people talking about it, but you just gotta make it right like I did. It's cause this was good, this was really good. I'm definitely gonna be eating the rest of that. It was just so creamy. There was a bite to it with the bologna and it was just so, Moving on to jello tuna, I am using the most famous recipe that calls for diced onions, red peppers, cucumbers, and celery. Then topping all of that off with albacore tuna. Now I'm adding some salt. Or some olives. Next I'm pouring in the jello powder, vinegar, and water and mixing that evenly. So now it's ready to be put into the freezer and this is the result. Sadly, I didn't realize one side was still stuck to the mold which ruined the entire shape, but I did take the neatest piece and topped it off with more tuna for presentation. Meal number two. Oh, the smell is just, oh my god. It's, oh. There's so many things that should not be combined and that's this. Um, okay. And I'm open to food. I'm very open to food. I love food. This has me like shaking. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, no, that wasn't fair. That wasn't a fair test. That wasn't fair. I know people are gonna flip because I barely tasted it. Oh. <laughs> it tastes like feet. <laughs> no. 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 Mm, just thinking about it. Mm, just remembering it. I would never, ever, ever serve this to somebody unless I'm trying to hurt them because that was the worst thing I have ever you know I had a little bit of hope because to a degree to a degree it made sense because if you think of ceviche there's a little bit of you know lemon seafood and vegetables but what ruined it is how sweet the jello was that's why it didn't work We're not gonna talk about that no more. We're just gonna move on to the next meal because if I think about it again, I will gag again, so. <laughs> Lastly, we are making the famous ambrosia salad. The base for the salad is whipped cream, so I'm adding that into the bowl. Then I'm adding chopped walnuts, some shredded coconut, a few mini marshmallows, chopped pineapple chunks, maraschino cherries, and fruit cocktail.
Now I'm just going to mix it all together until everything is perfectly coated. And if you want to make your ambrosia salad pink, just add some of the maraschino cherry juice and it'll change the color. So now that it's ready, I'm putting it in a cute matching heart-shaped dessert bowl and once again topping it off with more walnuts, shredded coconut, and a little sweet cherry in the middle. All right, so here is the third one. It is extra cute in this little dish here that I got, I think, at TJ Maxx for $3. And it's just, oh, it looks so good. So let's just go into it. Let's see what it tastes like. Mm. So this is actually really, really good. Um, I feel a lot like the neighbor in Edward Scissorhands where she's like, Try my ambrosia salad. <laughs> Allow me. Um, it's really good. I get the hype. I get why she was bragging so much about it. It's pretty much an ice cream sundae without the ice cream because it's just whipped cream and toppings. But instead of the toppings being flavorless things like sprinkles, it's fruit. And it adds so many different bursts of flavor. The nuts are a must. Um, I love the coconut on top, and yeah, this is amazing. I would totally, totally serve this on a regular. So that concludes the end of this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed me trying mystery food. If you guys want me to try more strange meals from different decades, just comment the recipes and the meals down below. Um, if you guys want to see more vintage and princess content like this, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you can know exactly when I post, and I will see you in my next video.